Uncle Boo, you quit clicking on stuff, buddy. You're doing over there, but Jesus. That wasn't me, that was you. Don't you I'm trying to be professional shit. here. I am professional. You're the one over there fucking up everything. Oh! Now you stop it. <laughs> Look, we got a special guest on tonight. We've got to be professional and act like we know what in the hell we're doing. <laughs> but everybody knows we don't anyway so what does it matter we're from eastern kentucky it's okay yeah, we're it's uh, we're over we just got the internet in like five kentucky. years ago so yeah, yeah. but <laughs> we are welcoming back probably one of our most beloved guests ever on the show people love when he's on because he shoots straight from the hip doesn't he uncle bill just like us he's a straight shooter if nothing else and some people some people don't like that some people do and some people, people that don't, I don't fucking like you. Some no, that's almost here. like a little poem. First show we had Sean Clark on. Welcome, sir. Hello. <laughs> Back in 2006. Good Jesus. Boy. Long time ago. Yeah, I was looking the day and I was like, I knew it was one of the early guests, but I didn't know it was that early. We're getting old, yo. Yeah, this is, everything's falling apart. <laughs> Believe me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I feel it. I feel it. Went to the I went to see this band last night and Jesus Christ, man, I was feeling it. Like I was like, man, I just I can't stand out here in the pit no more. This is this is I'm too well, old for like, this shit. I used to be a night owl, I used to stay up all hours of the night and stuff, and I just can't do it. I cannot do it anymore. Usually yeah. eleven o'clock at night, that's usually it for me. So mm -hmm. but, but how you doing? I'm good. Um just been gearing up for a string of conventions coming up that are going to start bombarding me with uh, i've just been running ragged trying to get things ready it's it's uh when you're juggling like five different shows on a weekend and trying to ship banners and photos and pins and crap all over the u.s to people and trying to organize them to be there to take care of people it's a lot more work than people know i so. could only imagine yeah. I mean, At this point, do you got you have like assistance? Are you doing all this shit on your own or like well I'm a bit of a control freak, so like the main job is pretty much all me, but yeah, I have assistants that I've got like 20, 20 different people that work with me and, and you know, work at the shows and sit with the people and you know, I'll send different people to run things for me because I obviously can't be at every show every weekend, you know. I remember back when we went to all these shows too, it was like a convention season kind of, but anymore oh, yeah. it, I mean, it's like all year round. It's all year round now. Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy. And it makes well, it slows down difficult. slightly in December and January, slightly, but that goes from, instead of being every weekend, maybe it's two weekends out of the month, you know? So, so. but Hey, but I can't complain. That's why I'm, that's why I'm buying that's your bread and crazy butter, shit. Man. Yeah. The, <laughs> Lost boy coats and yeah, you know the all the masks and whatever else you got so much shit I can't even remember all the stuff that you've got. I have to go on the YouTube page and check it out. Yeah, the sign, the fucking signed posters, man. Like, cause I'm a big poster guy, or I was for a long while. I don't buy them anymore, but just looking at all those autographs on posters and all that, I'm very, very jealous. Uh I don't know. I look back at I look at those posters sometimes and go, man, did I ruin that poster with all this shit written on here? You know, I should have left it alone. But I don't know. I don't know. It was it was something I was really into. Don't do it too much anymore, uh, with the exception of like just things that I started years ago that some rare person pops up. Like, oh, I gotta get them to sign that too. Um, you know, I'll break out a poster once in a while, but rarely do I take stuff to conventions anymore to get signed because I've kind of got everybody, you know, and I'm <laughs> not that interested do. in new if people. Anybody, yeah. Yeah. Is there like does. an autumn yeah. where there's really no more room for a signature where you've got it signed so much like a Halloween poster or something? Um, like uh, there was there. I mean, there's still a little bit of room, but um, I started the very first, remember the very first McFarlane movie maniacs action oh, figures. Yeah. I've got them back here. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I started the Jason and the Myers one. I started getting every guy who played the role every, you know, back when those came out. So every time a new movie comes out, I bring it to the next guy and go here, need you to add this to, but yeah, they're getting pretty full. So 
Actually, there is one I got to add um cuz I just booked Glenn Ennis into a couple shows and he played Jason in the uh the corn field scene in Freddy versus Jason. Oh. He's the one on fire and everything. And uh, I got to add him to that stupid figure now, so I'll be dragging that to a show eventually. He's doing Horror Hound uh Cincinnati and he's doing Houston uh Houston Horror Film Festival. So anyway. At least it's just something like a figure though. I don't think I could do the shit where you drag around posters and stuff anymore, man. Oh. Like I used to have, you know, like the backpack <laughs> with the poster tubes and shit coming out. Oh yeah. It's like I don't think I can do that anymore. I'm no, not- I mean every once in a while, like I said, I'll break it out. Like I, I just got two new people from Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the guy who plays Dan, the cop. Yeah. And one of the Terenzi brothers. So I need to get add them to that, you know, because I've had everybody sign it. So I'll be breaking that out for that. And, you know, there's a couple things here and there. But for the most part, like I rarely get, you know, even though I'm given like Halloween ends posters and stuff like that, I I don't drag it around and have everybody sign. Maybe I'll take it to 45 years of terror just because it's easy to get everybody right in the same room and I can just walk around and do it and I'm not paying for it. <laughs> so <you know. laughs> now we'll uh, these bastards that have to pay huh. shit me too at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Good uh, Lord. I was, uh, this is kind of funny. This sounds super arrogant, but I thought it was kind of funny. I was walking my aunt, my aunt Robin had never been to one of these conventions and we just did creepy con in Ontario, California, a couple weeks ago. And she'd never seen what I do, you know, and she finally came and saw, and she was like, holy shit, this is crazy, you know? And I'm walking around, (laughs) and I literally walked by somebody and pointed at their item they were holding that they just got signed by one of my clients. And I just, I pointed out, I go, $6. (laughs) And she goes, what? I go, I just made $6. I just pointed (laughs) at it. You know, I'm like, you know? Boom, boom, you know, I just thought it was kind of funny. You know, I was being like, she's all really. I said, yeah, you know, 10%. You know, and, and, oh, Jesus. Yeah. You know, that was a Matthew Lillard autograph, you know, 60 bucks. So $6. So, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Chuching the um, 25 years of terror. Was that the very first show that you promoted? Yeah. Myself and two other guys did that one. Uh, a guy named Anthony Massey. God. Um, who uh, I'm not very friendly with anymore. Um, uh, but he doesn't like to ever bring up, I had anything to do with the convention. He likes to, he's been doing his best to erase me from the history, uh, but that didn't work out so well. Um, and then another guy named Paul Swearingen, who actually passed away a few years ago. Um, so us three did the 25th, and then I did the 30th, the 35th, the 40th. I brought Horror Hound in on the 40th. And then the 45th also brought Horror Hound in. And Malik Akkad has been involved since the first one. Actually, Mustafa was involved with the first one. Um, but then s- since then, Malik has, has has been involved in all of them. So. Yeah, so I went on the website today. There's nothing really up yet in terms of like guests or anything like that. We're talking like September, though, right? Before that. Yeah, actually- the, reason, the reason why, um, quite honestly, is we were supposed to announce this thing on October 1st. And we had to wait until we had permission. And so, you know, certain people move slower pace than us. And the second we had the okay, like literally I just go launch it, just launch it, just put something up because I was so afraid they'd call the next day and go, Oh wait, no, hold up. Let's wait a little longer. And like, no, fuck it. Get it out there because you know, it's, it's, it's the unfortunate thing when you're, when you, when you're dealing with, you know, we're dealing with the people that own the Halloween franchise and everything has to go through attorneys and be approved. Every piece of artwork, every image, everything takes forever. So it, it unfortunately really slows the process down. We ended up losing about five months on just them dragging their feet. Um, but you know, now it's out there so we can finally, it's funny is, Nathan and I kind of just stopped working on it because it's like, until this thing's real, you know, we knew the convention center was booked, 
But until it was out there and people were on our asses going, okay, when do tickets go on sale? Who's coming? Blah, blah, blah. We kind of just started working on other shit. Now we're scrambling, you know? So. So, yeah, they're kind of notorious for that too, though, for, I mean, anything to do with the Halloween franchise going through like every, everything in the world before it gets put out that way. Yeah. 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 It is what it is. I understand they're protecting their, yeah, their especially now. Yeah. Property. But, um, yeah, so you know, now we're just starting to work on the guests and figuring out how we're gonna do, you know, when are tickets gonna go on sale? How much are they gonna cost? What what are they gonna include? What's the VIP gonna be? You know, all this stuff is like we're working on right now. So <laughs> somebody just people, asked that some, in the that's chat. what I was gonna put. Yeah. Somebody just goes, When are the tickets go on sale? Yeah. Like right before yeah. you say that. See, that's the thing. It's like we're bombarded with when the tickets go on sale how much your tickets gonna be is jamie lee curtis gonna be there it's like all my favorite question is people random dudes i don't know will message me hey bro i know you can't say anything but dude you can tell me is jamie coming yeah like yeah i'm gonna tell you dude (laughs) guy i don't know sure thing i'm gonna tell you you know come on there are any guests that you're working on maybe that have never done I mean, I'm oh, sure yeah. there's there's probably a couple. There's already a few confirmed that have never done a Halloween convention. I can think of at least 10 right off the top of my head. Wow. So, yeah, no, there's going to, and we're talking about, I mean, there's somebody from part one that's never done a convention uh, that just randomly contacted me, didn't even know this person existed really. Um, and I was like, holy shit. And then I verified, no, this is really the person. Okay, well. There's, there's one more the Halloween nerds are going to go crazy for. I mean, it's not like, it's not Kyle Richards yet. Hopefully we'll get Kyle Richards there. But I mean, it was just a random character that I was like, oh shit, that's another name for their part one poster, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, uh, sure. And that person just reached out to me, ended up being a friend of one of my clients. I was like, wow, I didn't even, I didn't even know who this person was until, and then I verified it and it's really the person, so. Sweet. Are we going to possibly see uh, Tony Moran there? Oh, um, <laughs> not a chance in hell. <laughs> I, you know what the funniest part about all this is, and uh, and I haven't even I can think of I can think of a lot of funny things about it. No, go ahead. Well, I know that you guys invited me on here to talk about this insane new video <laughs> that was up for I don't know. 36 hours or something like that before it was taken down and now has been making the rounds amongst people privately. Uh, uh, and you guys posted some of it. Um, but it's like, it's like so batshit insane that nobody really even wants to put it up. I mean, people that hate Tony Moran have contacted me and said, I don't even want to put it up because I don't want to be connected to this thing. You know, I mean, it's that bad. And the crazy part about this that I never told you guys about is Tony Moran reached out to me via his manager about two months ago, wanting to make peace. Hmm. So wait a minute, where does this fit in the timeline of that video? Is this like right after that or right before? No, no, that? no, that video happened. What? Just a couple weeks ago. Right. So, okay. okay. Yeah. It, I mean, so it, this, uh, this was probably this was probably around October that I got I was in an airport in Houston on a layover <laughs> and I got a phone call from uh his agent, his booking agent, a guy named uh, um Peter um oh god, why is his last name escaping me? Where's my phone? As I, I'm it's horror autographs is their company, and his name is Peter uh how many different oh, agents is he? Delorme, De- De- Delorme, Delorme. Well, he, he, he works with a few different people, but the one that he's been working with for several years is, is uh, a father and son team. Peter and Spencer Delorme, Delorme is their name. And Peter called me and he said, Hey, look, um, Tony asked me to reach out to you. Wanted to extend an olive branch. And wanted just to put all the shit behind, bury the hatchet. And they caught me in a moment where I was, you know, I was getting ready to to leave. I was getting ready to board another flight. 
<clears throat> so I was just like, you know, this is a lot to throw at me. All of a sudden, I'm going to have to think about this. Personally, I, I'd love for the drama to be over because the, the whole where the drama stems from is completely a fabrication. He has based all his hatred on at me over the past 10 whatever years it's been plus on a lie. <laughs> and he's it he's made such a jackass out of himself publicly over it that now he kind of feels like he has to perpetuate the lie or he'll look like a dumbass for <laughs> having I know it's like you can't uh, you make yourself look more like a dumbass uh, just do what you've been doing um but no he he would look like a total idiot if he's like oh wow I all this shit I've been talking for over a decade oops my bad, you know, um, but he I, I, he's so far gone chemically, I think, that I don't think you can reason with him. I don't think even if I prove to him all the stuff that, you know, he is fabricated in his mind is bullshit. So anyway, I told the dude I did say to him, you know, the timing's a little suspicious because rumors were starting to go around about H45. And I was like, hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and there was rumors about Jamie being there. And I was like, wow. He probably sat back and started thinking with his wallet. Like, wow, I'm going to be missing out on all those bucks. You know, how do I get in there? You know. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, so I, I said, you know what? I got to think about it. And then I never heard from them again. And I was so busy. I, I'm not pursuing him. But then literally... Two, three weeks after that call, uh, he was online badmouthing me again. And I I saw him posting some shit. Somebody sent me a screen grab. And I'm like, well, I guess that ship sailed. <laughs> you know, that lasted a long time. Um, uh, maybe it was just his agent, like, trying to, you know, hopefully thinking, man, we need to get in on that convention. Let's see if we can. Maybe, who knows if Tony really asked him to. But I, I don't think he would have made that call without his okay in it, you know. Right. So, so I'm curious because we we've been around long enough to actually remember when that first kind of started, mm -hmm. like when that rift and everything first kind of started. So whatever, like how much ever that you're comfortable talking about, like how the hell did all this start? Like what is the genesis of all this? Well, um, I mean, basically, I found him. Uh, you know, I, I at the time I wasn't really booking people. I had booked people, you know, in the in the first Halloween convention, but I wasn't a booking agent. And I found him while I was a journalist. I think I was writing for Dread Central, and it was just a fluke that I found him. Um, and I asked him if he'd do an interview, and he said yes. And I went to his office and and interviewed him. And afterwards, I asked him to sign a couple things. Um. And I, and he, you know, he blew me away when he said, I've never signed a Halloween autograph in my life. I'm like, are you kidding? He goes, no, this is the first Halloween poster I've ever signed. And, um, and I said, dude, there's, there's so many Halloween fans that would love to get your autograph and they do these shows and, you know, they charge and blah, blah, blah. And, and he's like, really? And I, I said, yeah, I said, you know, I knew a guy, Eben Magar, who, who now runs Mad Monster Party and he's co-owner of uh, uh, Famous Monsters. Uh, he just bought it with Corey Taylor. He was doing a convention in Van Nuys, California called Necro Comic Con. It's the infamous convention that O.J. Simpson showed up oh, at. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I told him, I said, hey, look, my buddy's putting on this show in Van Nuys. Um, you know, if, if you you know, why don't you try it? It's local. You're not too far from there. Drive over. If you, if you think it's lame, go home, you know? And, um, anyway, uh, sorry, my, my girl's tech, uh, trying to call me and let her know I'm doing this. Um, and so he tried it out. He had a blast and, uh, hold on doing a podcast <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and uh, he was like, dude, this was awesome. You know, he had a blast. So he goes, can you get me in some more of these? So I knew some promoters because uh, I had been, I go to conventions as a fan and I had been going and reviewing them for Dread Central. Um, so I made a few calls, got him into another one. Then he said, can you get me in another one? And, 
And I go, dude, well, you need, you need a booking agent, right? So I tried to introduce him with Chris Rowe, who uh, has been, you know, he had George Romero as Malcolm McDowell. So I, I said to him, I said, look, I know this guy, Chris Rowe, that does this. And, you know, uh, he goes, could you talk to him? And I said, sure. So it was at the, at the convention. I walked up to him and I said, Hey man, you know, Tony Moran, face of Michael Myers, blah, blah, blah. And he said, uh, wait, his exact words was in the, in the movie, like, like three seconds. And I said, <laughs> yeah, long. I said, yeah, but I go, dude, he's the face of Michael Myers. You know, it's a big deal. And he goes, pass. And he said <laughs> it just like that very arrogantly. And I was like, wow. Okay. So, you know, I didn't say anything to Tony, but then Tony's kind of like, oh, hey, did you talk to that guy? Did you ask him? And I said, yeah. He goes, what did he say? So I told him exactly what he said. And he goes, fuck that guy. You know, why, don't you, why don't you rep me? And I'm like, I guess I could. And that's how this all started. I mean, that's it, it, if, if that wouldn't have happened. Um, uh, let's see. Boom, boom. Oh, sorry. You're fine. I can play this while you're. I'm the only one that's Michael Myers. You fucking bitch. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, so he. Uh, yeah. So that's how it started. So I, I, I worked with him for probably two years, I think. And we did the rounds. He pretty much hit all the shows. Now, back then, there wasn't nearly as many conventions as there are today, you know, but he hit all the main ones. And then he's like, hey, let's do that chiller again. And I said, well, you know, you just did that last year. And he goes, well, let's go back. I said, you know, it, it doesn't work that way. You know, it's like, you know, they don't want the same people every year. And he didn't like hearing that. And I said something to him that he bring, I've heard him bring up when he talks about this shit. Because I, I said, well, dude, you don't want to oversaturate yourself either. And, and he was like. I've heard him say in interviews, he fucking tell me oversaturate myself. You know, who the fuck do you think you are? And I need money right now. I needed money, blah, blah, blah. And I told him I was in a situation, blah, blah, whatever. You know, he had told me he needed money, but I was trying to do what was best for him as a client, not to oversaturate himself, to, to keep himself relevant and whatever. Apparently he was looking to just cash in real quick. Although, you know, here we are, how many years later, he's still trying to cash in. But I knew he was having some marital issues. He was having some issues with his wife at the time. And he had had new, newborn twins very recently. Now, this is involving another individual. There's a guy named Bill Philpott, runs Days of the Dead, who I'm also not a fan of. He, um, at, at one time, we were friends. Uh, and this is where the whole rift began because when bill and i uh bill and i had a very brief moment where we partnered up right and that ended pretty quickly and when it did he basically i became the enemy when he split off to do his being a booking agent um which he started something called re-evolution management which is now defunct it, it's not it's no longer around anymore. So I guess we know who, who did better at that job. Um, he, when he was at my house one day, I was on the computer um, and I had set up a MySpace page for Tony, right? Um, this is how long ago this shit was, fucking MySpace. <laughs> so I, ha I knew how to do um, HTML where you could customize them. Remember, you could customize your pages. Right. So I set up the page for him. I customized it. Uh, cause he didn't know how to do any of that shit. So I I'd set it all up for him and I was on there changing something and Bill was here and he looked at it and he goes, is that, you know, Tony's page? I go, yeah, you know, I, I did it for him. And he said, oh, you know, and he saw that there were messages and he said, dude, check his messages. And I, and I, and I was just kind of like, you know, being stupid, like, oh, okay, sure. And I clicked on him, and it was his private messages. And there was some messages between him and his wife and it was some personal shit and we're reading it and i was like oh fuck you know and uh and it was some heavy stuff they were fighting pretty heavily and anyway i shut that you know i shut it down and that was the end of it that's it that's the only thing that ever happened he was here 
while we looked at that, he was the one who asked me to do it. We did it. I looked at it. He took that and somehow manufactured a story that I hacked his email. Somehow hacked his email. I don't even know where the fuck that came from. But literally that little bit of truth where I did look at his personal message became I hacked his email account. Well, I never looked at his messages ever again, never cared to. Um, in fact, I think he ended up, you know, I don't even know what happened to that page. You know, he changed the password or whatever and whatever. Anyhow, that little bit of Sean hacked my email and tried to ruin my marriage. Also, <laughs> he, he also said in some other thing, you know, that I had contacted his wife and was trying to ruin his marriage and. I've never spoken to his wife, don't know his wife, never spoken to her in my entire life. I, I just think that this lie has just grown into this crazy thing. So anyway, that's where it all started. And when Richard Brooker passed away, he called me out of the blue and was, oh, actually, no, he texted me. Let me correct myself. He texted me out of the blue and he said, hey, heard about Richard. My condolences. I'm like, yeah, it sucks. He was a good dude. We're having a, a civil conversation. I'm like, oh, you know, maybe it took took Richard Brooker passing away for Tony to like, you know, maybe a life short. You know, we should end this bullshit. And then it immediately turned into. So why don't you fucking admit what you did? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he said, just be a man and admit it. And I'm like admit what now this is before he'd ever told me what i had done he later said it in interviews this crazy story of me hacking his email so i'm like well, what are you talking i don't even know why you're mad at me what what do you just fucking be a man don't be a fucking pussy i'm like bro i have no clue you have you need to tell me what it is i'm apologizing for you know i i don't know what you're asking and it just went round and round to fuck you, you little bitch. If I ever see you, I'll beat your ass. I still got the text messages. I've got threats from him via text. The guy's a genius, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's always a good idea. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, so he said all this shit, and I'm just like, okay, and then it's just escalated. So here we are, all these, you know, it's still going on. It gets bigger and bigger, and every every time I hear him tell a story, it gets bigger, it gets crazier, and it gets wronger, like <laughs> is wronger a word? It gets more, you know, fabricated. Worse. I took notes, so check this shit out. <laughs> <laughs> I went back and I watched that entire two and a half hour train wreck. It's brutal too. It, it, it's yes. one of the hardest things I've ever tried to sit through. And Dude, that's it like is. I've seen Silo and shit. And, and that's really, like one of the hardest things I've ever tried to sit through. It's not really because of Tony either. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like it's half and half. Days. It's yeah, yeah. It's about fifty yeah, percent him. I gotta find my notes. Where did I even put these fucking notes? Um, I hope I didn't delete them because I took notes. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I mean, we're talking I, I, like this is all after his apology tour on Daniel Harris's Instagram. That's the thing that got me. I was like. Okay, so this is how you want to portray, but then you're going around doing this other shit. It's like, which one is the real person? Yeah, you kind of got to pick one, one or the other, right? Like, which which one are you? Oh, you know what? I think I did it in a Word doc. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I did. All right. Uh, let's see here. Well, we're there talking we about yes, I did. I got it. This podcast was from what about a month ago, or what was the about a month ago? Okay. Um, so here's this is let's have some fun with this first. You'll like this. So <laughs> just for the hell of it, I decided to count how many times <laughs> he said how many times he said cunt. <laughs> how many times fancy Nancy was said, <laughs> and how many times that other guy goes. You're Tony fucking Moran. Man. Are you fucking kidding me? Am I nuts? <laughs> Let's just think it here. Here we got a clip here. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So, it, what I'm gonna let you guys guess. Which one do you think was said more? Tony fucking Moran, A. Okay. Cunt B or Fancy Nancy C. Fan I think Fancy Nancy. I think Fancy Nancy too. 
you're wrong. Oh, Tony God, fucking we're... Moran wins with 39 <laughs> Tony fucking Morans. 39. So... <laughs> Jesus. Fancy uh, Nancy came in second with 30. Uh, and Cunt came in third with 26 Cunts. There was 26. Well, the, yeah. the dude is a huge Tony Moran fan, though, because Tony Ooh. married him and his wife. And you tried yeah, to that's... run the joy of that yeah. matrimony. Okay, so do you <laughs> want to know how know. I tried to ruin it? Yes. Yes. Because I was curious too. When I'm watching this going, what the fuck did I do? I, I couldn't remember. So I contacted the other two guys, the two guys that look like deers and headlights. I those, feel bad for those guys, yeah, man. No, they're Brett is actually a really good dude. I, I, I know Brett really well. Um, and they both apologized and they were like, dude, you know, they said that they not only did they, you know, tell him beforehand, do not bring up Sean Clark. Let's not talk about him. But, dude, I had been, I was on their podcast like a month before I this. Know. <laughs> All I know. Right? We looked that up. Yeah. They asked me to come on as a guest. And then they're, they're, you know, or the guy's trashing me. So when he said that, you know, you, he tried to ruin the most important day of your life or whatever he said. Actually, I, I think I, I put it on here. Let's see. Oh, some cunt tried to ruin the most important day of your life. Don't name his name. You and I are bigger than that. Yeah, that's the best quote of the whole fucking thing. We're bigger than that. Yeah. So anyway, the guy, it said Pat Mine. on. Well, I don't know why it said Pat. His name's Michael Strickland, and he owns a store in San Antonio, Texas, called Michael's Horror and Pinball. So if you want to go meet him in person, you can go, you can go say hi. <laughs> Just go, you're Michael fucking Strickland. Oh my god, you know, am Nancy. I fucking nuts? Nancy. Anyway, so this guy is a super fan. I've met him at conventions. He's super obnoxious, but he seems like an okay guy. Seemed like an okay guy. Um, and he had been bugging me for trying to get guests to come to his store to do a signing and stuff. And so I did their podcast. And apparently the other two guys told him before I came on that podcast, whatever you do, don't bring up Tony Moran. There's bad blood. Let's let's keep this positive. Let's not make it negative. Let's not turn it into a fucking dead pit show. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> try it. Yeah. Leave that so, to the professionals here. Yeah, professionals. So apparently, because I went back and watched the whole episode and there was nothing there. I'm like, well, what did I do? And they said the guy was so upset. He had it edited out when they put up my interview. Apparently, at one point, he said, oh, guess what? Tony Moran's coming to my store and is going to marry me and my, my fiance, blah, blah, blah. And all I said, this is what the guys told me. They said, all you said was, wow, how the mighty have fallen. Mm. That's all I said. And apparently that was me trying to ruin the most important day of his life. So I wonder how much, how much does he charge to do that? Tony Marin, just out of curiosity. Have you heard? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, seriously. He gives a fuck. Yeah. I don't know. So, but you know, the one thing about this interview that really got to me more than anything else was you've got to Sean, you've got to stop fucking peacocking around. Because that's the that's main true. issue. <laughs> You've got to quit with the fucking peacock. He's peacocking. He's peacocking. He's peacocking. Okay, so I got to tell you the peacocking story. Because I've the funny thing is I've told the story before, but he he created his own version. Which, I guarantee it. Yeah. Yeah. So to the peacocking story, let me let me get to that real quick because I I got notes on everything he said. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Let me find the peacocking. All right, well, this is this is exactly how it went down, okay? It was at Monster Mania, Maryland, and um, it was it was about, I don't know, it was probably about 8 p.m. on a Saturday night, and I, I was, me and Nick Castle were standing in the lobby of the hotel waiting for Tommy Lee Wallace to come down because uh, we were going out to dinner. We were going to go to a restaurant. So I'm standing there talking to Nick Castle. I was not talking to fans. There was no fans around. So that his story that I was standing there peacocking in front of a couple, it was it was Nick Castle. Okay. 
So anyway, his version of the story was he was walking outside to have a smoke. Well, actually, he was walking in. Maybe he was outside smoking and he was coming in, heading towards the bar. Now, in his version, he says that he says he stops and he says with the people, yeah, you know what a cunt is? You want? Have you ever seen what a cunt looks like? Right. He tells this whole thing like he sets it up, like, watch what I'm going to do. Right. None of that ever happened. I watched him walk in, make eye contact with me at a small entourage of hanger ons. Right. And he looked at me as I'm standing there with Nick and he goes, that's a cunt right there. That's a real fucking cunt right there. And he just walked by into the bar. He was like, done. In his version, he stopped and said it to my face and I pussed out. Right. He literally walked by. It happened so fast that Nick Castle and I are looking at each other going, what the, f- did that really just happen? You know, like what the fuck? And and Nick was like, who's that guy? <laughs> I'm like, that's the face of, t- that's because he didn't know who he was. Right. You got Moran, the bada bing. Yeah. It's all about the face. So that's, that's all that happened. This whole story of him, you know, I, I, he, he embellishes every story, you know, cause here's the thing. I'm not afraid of Tony Moran at all. Could Tony Moran kick my ass? Maybe. I don't know. I don't care. I'm not afraid of him. I, 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 I've been beat up before. I'm not scared. You know, if he knocked me out, Oh, well, it is what it is. I'm not worried about it. But to to say that, like, I backed down when nothing happened, you know, I mean, okay. But I again, I don't I don't want to fight Tony Moran. I have no reason to. He's irrelevant to me. He's just some old drunk that keeps talking shit about me. I have nothing to do with, you know. Yeah. I, he became a Bacher grandpa. I th- yeah. yeah, I think he saw too many episodes of Sons of Anarchy and, uh, you know. So, um, Going back though, like to when you first met him, he had yeah. like just a regular job. Was oh, dude, would would you say his life was like it's kind of like an ordinary life? Or? Oh, very. Yeah, he was. I mean, watch that. It's on my YouTube channel. The very first interview he ever did ever was an on camera interview with me, and he don't have the he the the Tony Moranisms. You know, he isn't. Uh, let's brawl, bro. Yeah, he didn't have the tattoos. He didn't have the fucking biker vest. He didn't have all the, you know, I'm I'm punk rock, bro. You know, he was a he, he was a broker. Uh, he was a broker of the mortgage Kid company. Over here. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, I don't know. He's suddenly he's adopted the fucking he's like the, Irish punk rock culture. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's like Andrew Dice Clay now. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I mean, I bet you he probably couldn't name three songs by them, you know, no, probably but not. I'm not a fan either way. So I wouldn't know the difference, but, um, anyway, uh, yeah, I, you know, he's, it, it happens with a lot of these guys. They get, they get caught up in the lifestyle and that, and that's what happened to him. I watched it happen and I saw it because, you know, he immediately turned into this party guy who was hitting on all the women and, you know, trying, you know, I'm fucking Michael Myers. I saw it happening. And I was like, wow, this is, this guy's got like an egomaniac, you know? And, you know, we've all had our moments, you know, there was even a moment in, you know, where I thought my shit was fucking, you know, didn't stink either, you know, but, and I, but I, I, I eventually realized, you know, don't believe your own hype. You know, you get this moment, you know, in the middle of the Redis, mania where i thought i was big shit you know and then like <laughs> i remember it's the a bunch of so- it's just a bunch of soccer moms that are trying to get close to him it has nothing to do with me you know what i mean um but they all started kissing my ass and i bought into it for a minute you know but anyway he yeah i i i just saw a monster in the making you know and i was dr frankenstein so but uh let me do so let's do some uh I, I'm going to take some notes here on some of the things oh, yeah. he said. Because every story, and I, this is no bullshit, in that entire two and a half hour thing, every story he told was incorrect. <laughs> I, I mean, believe that. I even, believe even that. Even in regards to Halloween stuff, it was wrong. And I could tell the two guys at the top knew that he was wrong, but didn't have the guts to say anything to him because they didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to f- get into an argument did, with a drunk guy. 
Right? Did you notice though, and I couldn't help but notice this, that as, the further along that that interview goes, you can see them physically like wilt. <laughs> Oh, yeah. In the in the beginning, they're like, oh, you know, they're all like kind of up and. Oh, happy. you can and tell by, they're like, texting each other, like, yeah. oh shit, what are we gonna do? I mean, by the middle of it, it's just a mess. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Um, man. so like when he starts telling the story about the face, the face, he said the face on the pumpkin. It, well, the face is on the hand; it's not on the Rob. pumpkin. But he kept talking about. I told you, bro. Did any of them tell you? Dude, he literally just found that out himself, and he's telling the story wrong, okay? <laughs> so, and here's the funny thing. He's talked about this whole thing about how John Carpenter was a genius, and he took the poster from Black Christmas and superimposed the suffocated woman, you know, on, onto the hand. Dude, first off, that is just ridiculously wrong. Um, John Carpenter had zero to do with that poster. I even... I talked to Erwin Yablons the other day. He, he happened to call me about the, the convention because he saw it announced and we were talking about the convention. And I said, hey, just out of curiosity, did Carpenter have anything to do with the Halloween artwork? And he goes, zero. That was all me. He goes, I, I told the, the artist what I wanted. And I asked him about the hand on the, you know, the face on the hand. And he said that was something the artist just came up with. That that was not based on anything. So his whole story completely wrong completely wrong then let's see what else um well uh, i like how he refers to them as the macad family <laughs> macad <laughs> right. you know the macads the macads okay. um and uh, and then he rips on james jude courtney Calls where, him a kind. Where did that come from? That, I have yeah, no that, idea. That caught me completely off guard. He's got too. three names. That was his argument, by the way. Yeah. I was like, "What the hell kind of argument is it? That the guy has three names, so all of a sudden he's a puss." <laughs> well, let's let's think about that. Names. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Tommy Lee Wallace. Yeah. John Michael Graham. Does P J Souls count? I don't know. But I mean, there's a hundred. It doesn't make any sense. But I don't no. think like anything he was no. really going for it, made sense. For, Again, you know, you should have counted how many times he said three names too. By the way, because he yeah. said that about twenty times in that one. When he's putting over Tommy Lee Wallace, like a couple of minutes later, <laughs> and then and then saying that they they hired him because he looked like him. That's the most nuts thing I've. I mean, he looks nothing like him. Looks nothing like him. No. Well, I mean, uh, clearly, I mean, they're they're both older, but that's it. Like I don't, yeah. I don't, yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, he said, yeah, we, yeah, and that's the other thing. It's like, if you're going to find somebody that looks like him, wouldn't you have to have somebody missing all their top teeth? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Speaking of which, what the fuck happened to those teeth? When, when the, what suddenly they're gone. Bar room brawl. Possibly. Probably. I don't know. He, he seems like one of those guys that stay. I mean, I don't know. I don't know this for a fact mm -hmm. or anything, but to me, I mean, he seems like he drinks quite a bit. New. No, seems fine. Um, Dude. Yeah. Almost on a day. I, probably on a daily basis. Okay? Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. I don't want to get sued. But... <laughs> only <laughs> only went on, on being interviewed, apparently. What's the deal with um, the, his girlfriend, Nancy, too, man? Like, I, I mean... If it's your girlfriend and you see like what he was doing with her almost immediately. What do you mean, dude? He respects women. You see them tits? <laughs> I just you see them tits. Come on, show your tits, babe. I was like, but he's more I, of an ass yeah. man, though. He said, yeah, he's more of an ass man. I don't even like. You would tits. never know. <laughs> uh, look at these titties. You know, I don't know her. I've never met her. I know nothing. Of, I mean, except for the fact that she was in a small part in the first scream. Uh -huh. I, I felt. I felt really sorry for her, but she seemed like she was, she was in, she seemed like she'd been having a good time just like him. So I, uh, that was the worst part for me. To, the, the cringiest part was all that shit. And then those guys, the top two guys, when that was going on, they were just like, ah, God, like oh. with this, we're never getting this, you know, put up or anything. So it was just, uh, I don't know. It's one of the hardest things ever to watch. It's worth like skin and rink times two, really. Like I don't have yeah. you seen Skin and It's actually more oh, entertaining no. than Skin and Marie. Yeah. Well, it probably is a little bit more entertaining, but two and a half hours of this too, and like 
a buddy of mine was asking, it's like, what do you talk about with Tony Moran for two and a half hours? They didn't well, really talk yeah. as much as like, he just spewed a bunch of nonsense for two hours. Well, then there was a whole like, five ten minutes where he just it's almost like he forgot he was being interviewed and he's just mumbling and he's talking to fancy nancy and they're like he's like this he's like looking away going <laughs> there's one there's one part too where michael is like are you chopping up some coke over there tony <laughs> yeah and and his reaction was i wish bro i wish and he's i'm in indiana i don't ha i don't have anybody here for that like so you got somebody for that back home. Okay. All right. And then he gets mad. It's like, he thinks about it. Like you could see like the, the gears turn it, and yeah. he goes, dude, that's fucked up that you brought up me cutting the Coke. <laughs> yeah. Like, like he, he thought about it. Definitely. He thought about it for a minute, which was really funny though. Did you notice, um, when he's telling him that his agent or whatever told him to keep the alcohol away from him, you see his face go. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Who said that? And he, he, you know, you know that guy got laid into after that. Like you don't keep the alcohol away from from no. Tony Moran. No, that's no. one thing you just don't do. No, I, I, he probably got fired. <laughs> but um, so the podcast people are asking like the the entire podcast is not available it was yanked from youtube but there is clips on our video i think i've got it in the description um about all these parts we have in the video i think that we well, i couldn't about. believe that she actually showed her tits and, and them out that, for like yeah. a good minute how's this like Wow. So there was another part to it too, though, Sean, where he was just basically saying, and we've got a clip from that. He essentially, him and the in the Michael guy were talking about that he is the only Michael Myers. Yeah. I've, and I've, I'm I've, like, I've got I've got uh, some notes on that too. Yeah. Please like go through any of that. Well, show you're gonna show the clip. Yeah. No? Sure, yeah. Everyone else was the uh well, I mean, I've just got the little brief clip. We yeah. can play it again here to see. I'm the only one that's Michael Myers, you fucking bitch. <laughs> so what he said, he actually said he was the only one that's ever been credited as Michael Myers. Everybody else, everybody else was credited as the shape. That I'm the only Michael Myers, which is, I mean, uh, okay, um, you're the same fucking character. Uh, you're just getting on, you're talking about the credit. Well, then one of the other guys, well, Will, Will Sandon was credited as Michael Myers, age six. or, And he's like, oh, okay, me and Will. Me and Will. That's it. <laughs> the so so I, I, I researched it. You know, I just went on the IMDb and looked at the credits. So, um, so here we go. Um, Will Sandon, uh, yes, Will Sandon was credited. As, as and he is the first on-screen Michael Myers ever, so Will Sandon does does have that. Um, but Dick Warlock from Part Two, George Wilbur Part Six, James U. Courtney, and all three of those films were not. Everybody else that ever played that role was credited as Michael Myers. So, you know, uh, Wilbur in Part Four, Shanks in Part Five. Um, uh, Chris Durand and H2O, Brad Lorre and Resurrection, Tyler Maine, uh, and Dag Ferch in both of Rob Zombie's films, all credited as Michael Myers. So, well, he hasn't do seen your research movies, before so you open your mouth. They don't count. He hasn't seen those movies. No, so. he has no idea. I don't watch that, bro. The, uh... <laughs> I like what he, he goes, he does his head like that all the time. He's like, let's go, bro. <laughs> he does brawl. And it's brawl, That's bro. brawl, bro. He does. He does that. You're right. My favorite part of your podcast, though, that had me dying, it was he should have just pushed him over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there wouldn't be a spot. Yeah, if you, if he's that out of it, just and he'll take at least five minutes to get up. <laughs> He'd waddle there like a turtle. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. Um. Let's see. What else do I got here? Uh, oh, I also love how he kept proclaiming that he doesn't do podcasts. <laughs> oh, yeah, he did say that. He said, I don't ever do these. Yeah, but there's like all this, this footage of him. 
<laughs> oh, that was the big thing. Like, I mean, all that stuff that happened before. See, this is the thing that for the people just watching this, I mean, this guy has a trail of like saying some of the worst shit about Halloween fans, the movies, <clears throat> like just John Carpenter, Jamie Lee Curtis. He's got like a whole back catalog. Well, Tyler of Mayne, too. Yeah. Um, and Tyler yeah. Mayne. Yeah. Which I'm curious well, if they've ever met at a convention since all that went down. I would be interested in. Uh, they were at one together since that happened. Um, but you know, Tyler I think Maine really the guy that you want to like start shit know, with. No, Tyler's just you know Tyler's such a cool guy, and and in and you know he because I think I did ask him about it, and he was just kind of like he had the same reaction that James and Courtney had because I. I sent the clip. I filmed it off of the, off of my computer and, and sent it to him. Just the, the bit where he talked about him and said that he was his bitch. And he even called him a fag at one point, you know? Yep. Um, and J James just laughed and just said, wow, it's, it's sad. You know, this guy's sad. You know, he, 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 he wasn't mad. He was just like, it's hard to be mad at somebody who's clearly got so many problems. You know, he's, he's the guy's a mess, you know? I mean, you know, the crazy thing is James and Tony are the exact same age, right? Oh my God. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I'd love, you know, I'd love to see if that fight, <laughs> 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 you know, let's, how, let's do it for charity. Let's see who, who is the bitch, you know, charity match. Michael versus Michael, they're the same age. You know, that wouldn't last too long. No, probably um, not. He just pushed uh, it down too. But you know, that's the thing. You know, I know we're we're having a good time laughing about this and stuff. But the reality is, the guy is got a ton of problems, and and I it's I want to feel sorry for him, but if and I'm sure a lot of people do, but it's hard for me to feel sorry for him when all he does is badmouth me and dude, I have nothing to do with the guy. I have nothing. To, I don't. The only time I talk about him is when he goes out there and talks about me and I have to, you know, people well, say, Hey, did you hear this? You know, what year was all that? That had to be what? 2006, 2007, something like that. Yeah. When all that went down. Yeah. Yeah. So that dude, long ago, it's, I mean, you're creeping up on 20 years, man. Let it go. Move on. I you mean, it would be, be you've been be feuding longer than Hulk Hogan and macho man back in the day. <laughs> It would be uh, easier to feel sorry for him though if he wouldn't keep doing shit like this. Like, well, you know, for a second there, I thought Danielle had come to his rescue, and he was, you know, maybe he was going to play up that sympathy thing. You know, I'm going to get some help, kind of thing. And and boy, that you know, I you know, I I haven't I I I haven't talked to her about it. Um, but you know. But I, I'd be funny. To, I, I'd like. It'd be funny to hear her reaction to. I, I mean, because I'm sure she doesn't even know about it. But it's like, well, they need to book Tony on their podcast, Scout. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm sure they'll do that. Yeah. Talk about Tony's sex life with Fancy Nancy. Yeah, and then they were talking about doing an OnlyFans and him fucking her. Like, who wants what? to see who the hell? Was were they talking about that? They want to see Michael Myers. Fuck. That was towards the end. I, uh, yeah. I must have zoned out by that point. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, dude, this is, you know, I don't know, man. I, I, I just, I, I, again, I don't know anything about her, but you know, I, I did a little research after all this went down and I'd seen some other interviews with her where she seemed very normal and sweet and just a nice lady. And, you know, I, I don't know what was going on that night, but shit. What's the deal though. I, I would have totally forgot about this. Mention this Danielle and scout both. I think scout was like crying over the whole Jamie Lee Curtis thing. And like, to me, that's not that hard to believe that she didn't know they were. I mean, just because she's not a fan. She's not a fan of the movies, especially the sequels. Why would she watch them? She's never watched them. Yeah. I mean, she hasn't. I mean, I know she hasn't. She doesn't even like to watch the ones she makes. I mean, so, I, I mean, I, I, I just, you know, I don't want to get into all that, but I just thought it was a little disingenuous that they were 
a week before that they were posting the picture of them together and bragging how great it was. And then a week later, it suddenly was the most traumatic moment of their lives. I was like, okay. I have a feeling, I don't know this for certain, but I have a feeling that Jamie Lee Curtis is probably just a really straightforward person. And she probably just said, Hey, I just don't, I don't know who you are. Dude, like I have that's no idea. exactly, you nailed it a hundred percent. That's her. Yeah, That's her. I mean, she is a blunt to the point person. And that night, I know for a fact she was exhausted. Like she, she hadn't eaten, she hadn't slept, and she had just come from overseas, and she, she just wanted it to be all over. And I think Danielle and Scout would have really benefited from somebody introducing them, but since she just walked up and tapped her on the shoulder, kind of thing, and caught her off guard, <clears throat> I, I think it, it just, it was just bad timing. It was just bad timing. Yeah. If you know, yeah. if somebody had come up to her and said, hey, Jamie, this is so-and-so. They were in the, this movie, and she played you, and the, 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 you you know, and gave her a heads up of who she was about to meet, they would have had the experience that they would have wanted to have. Yeah. But, I mean, because, dude, I'm going to tell you, when we did that night she came home thing, you know, when she was at Horror Hound, there were people she was in movies with. That she was she was whispering in my ear, "Who the fuck is this?" And I'm like, "That's so and so." And she'd be like, "Oh, hey, you know," and like, "How you been?" You know. I mean, I mean, she did that with the guy who played her boyfriend in Terror Train. She's like, "Who's this?" I said, "He was your boyfriend in Terror Train." She's all, "Are you fucking kidding?" I'm like, no, "That's him." And she's like, "Okay, you know what's his name?" And I tell her, and you know, I mean, she had no idea who they do. One of my favorite things, and she she wouldn't have a problem with me telling this story because it was it was fucking funny so we we had i had come up with this idea of renting a suite uh in the hotel uh and have all the guests come up before the show and have like a kind of like just a a little mixer with everybody where everybody could say hi and like how you been and because i was like if we're if we don't do this all weekend Every cast member at some point is going to be walking up to the table and stopping things by going, hey, how have you been? Blah, blah, blah. I said, let's just get it out of the way, right? So she loved that idea, and we did that. And everybody was coming to the hotel, to the suite, and uh, they were coming one at a time, and it's starting to fill up. And there became a point where she wanted to answer the door. So like, there was a knock at the door, and she goes, I got it. And she walked over to the door, and she opened it, and it was Charles Cyphers, right? Now she hadn't seen Charles Cyphers in forever. And he's <laughs> yeah. and at the time he's bald and he had the fucking Colonel yeah. Sanders goatee going on, right? And and he's all Jamie. And he's all she goes, and you are, and he's all, it's Chuck, Chuck Cyphers. And she goes, Holy shit, what the fuck happened to you? Give me a hug. <laughs> oh god. It was great, you know. I mean, that's true though. I don't even recognize Charles Cyphers from yeah. that period of time to you know. No, even yeah. like the 10 yeah. years between like when he was in major league, I was like, That's yeah, cool. yeah. Cause like, I don't know. I don't know what, but, I but you know, that was somebody that she had done a few movies with, you know, and she didn't recognize him. So how do you expect her to recognize, you know, them movies she's never seen. She doesn't follow it, it, You know, it, it, I understand, you know, it is what it is, but I, I, yeah. I kind of feel like, they were playing it up to get, you know, get clicks for their podcast. You well, know, I think part of it bit. too is this is just my thought of it. I think part of it might be that sometimes, like, we live in like this horror world where we think, you know, everybody knows everything about like horror people and like mm -hmm. celebs and stuff like that. And then, like, there's a lot of people that don't exist in this world that have no idea. And I would bet Jamie Lee Curtis is one of those people that she does not give a shit about like the horror in terms of like, the convention scene and you know older movies and things like that like like all of us do so i just don't think people understand that a lot of Dude, when we were when we did the commentary for halloween h2o it was me steve minor and her we did the audio commentary she literally told me before the thing started sean tell me when the scary parts are coming and she would she would look away because she, she didn't want to watch them even yeah. though she it's her own movie yep you know so she wanted me to like tap her on the knee when the scary parts were coming. <laughs> so as was, far as, um, 
the Halloween franchise, like they just ended a trilogy. Where, where do you think the, the franchise goes from here? I mean, or, uh, is whatever a, new spinoff, you know, like, TV uh, show, maybe, or anything's possible. It, it, it's, you know, I've said this a million times. It's, it's not over. It's never over. As long as that thing's making money. It, that Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, Jason, it's the new Dracula, Frankenstein creature, Wolfman. It's going to outlast all of us. They're going to keep making those movies long after we're dead. Yep. You know? So. A better question, too, is though, where does Tony Moran go from here? <laughs> Rehab, I hope. <laughs> Jesus. It, it, I, I think he's got two options rehab <laughs> or the grave. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's I mean, I don't know how, how much longer you can abuse your body like that. Is it, you know? Yeah, because he's what, in his mid 60s at this point? He's like 68 or something. Wow. I don't know, 65. 65 yeah. i don't yeah. know let me let me look it up yeah he's getting up there and that's definitely going to catch up to him before long but i mean best case scenario if he was to go to aa get himself straightened 65. up 65 he'll be 60, to, 66 in august according to the old internets if tony was to call you up and just explain things and say well, hey it seems like it's a little late for that i mean i i considered it when I got the call from his manager, I was, I was, you know, cause I thought about, I stepped back and I thought about, I remember being on the plane thinking it over. And I was like, you know what? Even if he is only doing this just to cash in on H 45, you know, it would be cool for the fans to have them all there in the same room. But the problem is most of those people from that movie don't want to be anywhere near him. You know, he keeps talking about, oh, my great friend, blah, blah, blah. Dude, they all can't stand him. They all think he's an embarrassment. Even the ones he says he's good friends with. They're all like, oh, I don't want to be near that guy, you know? Because so he's, this... Well, he's not really even doing that many actual conventions. Now it's more log lines of, like, haunted houses and used car dealerships and stuff like that. I mean. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the conventions that are booking him either have no clue yeah. of his history or they're just so low low level that they you know they'll book anybody you know they'll book they'll book fucking gary Busey and whomever you know and i'm i'm not saying that monster mania did that not knowing what you know went down but i mean anybody that books him now would probably you know you'd have to question you know what's going on <laughs> like dude there's certain I mean, guys out there that have a reputation i don't want to get into who you know who some of them are but when you see them pop up on a show, you know what kind of quality show that is, you know. So, I mean, Gary Busey did Gary Busey things <laughs> at a show. Yeah, it's like, dude, he's been doing that forever. Yeah, you know, it's like now it, it, you know, the difference is he's now doing it in the new Me Too era, the the woke era, yeah. the the everybody's offended by everything era. Um, he used to be able to get away with a little bit of the little ass grabbing here and there, you know, whatever, grab a boob and you're taking a pick, whatever he was up to. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it kind of just went, oh, crazy Gary. But now it's kind of like, oh, that's, uh, that's, you know, assault. So, yeah. 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 Things have changed for sure. Yeah. Um, other stuff you got coming up though, conventions, of course. What about horrors, hollowed grounds? You working on any episodes of those? Um, I mean, I'm editing a ton of episodes. I've just been so busy. I haven't, I, I mean, I haven't had time to do shit. I mean, to be honest with you, it, I, I, it really bothers me because I have so much fun doing the YouTube stuff. I have so much fun doing, you know, the thing with two heads with, with Chris, but we're both so busy mm -hmm. that finding the time to do it it's really tough right now and it sucks because it was just gaining momentum and people were starting to really get into it. And, you know, <clears throat> like with YouTube, uh, I've come to find, you know, and from a lot of my friends that do it full time is if you, if you're not consistent, you know, you, you don't get in their algorithm and, and you're not getting pushed. They, they push the people that drop stuff constantly, you know? Um, and that ain't going to be me. So, um, until I retire or some shit, uh, I don't have, I, you know, I got to do it when I, 
have free time. And lately <clears throat> I've been busier than ever. It's crazy. Like I, I, I've even gotten more help and I'm still busier than ever. And, um, I can't complain, you know, not woe is me. You know, I, I'm very lucky to, to be busy and, and have the business I have, but it's just, um, yeah, I don't have a lot of free time. And then you get so burned out that when you do have free time, you know, you just want to chill. You just, I don't, you know, cause yeah. you, you know, watch a movie, you know, just sit down and watch a movie. Five thousand dollars for the wedding is Tony Moran's fee. Jesus age Christ, man. Wow. Damn. I'm gonna that's start a... getting all, all of my clients or ordained. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that'd be that'd be another service you could offer for sure. Dude, what could Nick Castle that? do to do a wedding? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's something I want. I actually had a note here. Where did he say that? He said he said that I brought Nick Castle in to destroy his reputation. <laughs> That oh, was he his, did, yeah. He did. That was his quote. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I, he didn't expand on that, but I'm like, well, what does that mean? You mean I brought him in to tell people the truth? You know, because he was running around telling everybody that he did everything. And so I brought him in to destroy his reputation. Um, No, I literally just brought him in and people heard the truth. You know, I mean, I was there when I worked with him and heard him, you know, embellish on things he did. And I even said to him, I, I said to him, you know, cause he, he's not the easiest dude to talk to, as you can tell. But I said to him one time back then, Hey man, you know, you know, you know, you didn't do that scene and maybe you should. And he'd be like, bro, they don't fucking care. They don't care. Just tell them what they want to hear. And I'm just like, okay. I, I never remember pronounce you man and cunt. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, yeah, well, no, there was a time period. People forget that, but there was a time period when I don't think a lot of people, and even in the scene, knew there were like different people who were involved in the same movies, like yeah. different stunt guys that did different parts for, and, and so you could get away with that shit back then. You yeah. could go in and just be like, "Yeah, I was Michael Myers. Well, the, I was the only the guy." Warrington, Gillette, Steve. Yeah, Dash, exactly. Yeah. That's my yeah. favorite. Yeah. And my favorite was Warrington's excuse. Do you remember? I was there when it happened. Do you remember what his excuse was? What was he his could, excuse? He couldn't remember or something, right? Because he had a skiing accident <laughs> and he hit his head <laughs> yeah. and yeah. couldn't remember. Was I was great. like, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, Steve Dash is like what Tony Moran wants to be. Like he was, Steve Dash was the real version he was of like Tony man, Moran is trying sure. to be. Uh, yeah. Um, also, I, he also told the story when he started talking about Deborah Hill playing the scene across the street, you know, I've, I've debunked that and, and have oh, all the yeah, facts. Yeah. yeah. So he, he started getting into that saying, you know, people don't know that that was her blah, blah, blah. And it's like, he's got that one wrong too. Does this guy know anything about the fucking movie he was in? You know? There was another thing he said too. I was wondering if this was right because I didn't honestly know this. Hmm. At some point, he says, "You know what the most terrifying part in the movie is? It's when he's in the closet, and that's Tommy Lee Wallace." Now, yeah. was that part right? No, that's that is right. Okay. But I felt like when he brought that up, he was trying to demean Nick Castle. He was, I, yeah, clearly. He was trying to like, hey, the scariest part of the movie wasn't even Nick Castle. Yeah, you know, it was kind of like so, you know. Don't don't hold Nick on some pedestal. It's like, well, I mean, Nick is the guy, bro. Ninety percent of the movie's Nick. I'd say ninety percent is Nick. Nine percent is Tommy. One percent is is Tony. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, even one percent. I mean, it's literally what two seconds, maybe, maybe two, like seconds. three. I don't know. Don't mind that. Yeah. But I, don't, you know, again, I've said it a thousand times, dude. He what he did was relevant. What he did, he should have been, should be proud of and just fucking shut your mouth and sit there and sign your autographs. And, and I mean, it was a job he didn't give a shit about. He thought it was stupid. Mm. And then he found out he could monetize it. And now he's trying to play it up. Like he, you know, it's the greatest thing in the world. It's like, dude, you thought it was lame. Just sit back and fucking sign the autographs, take the cash and 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 enjoy yourself why are you trying to play this image of some badass like 
I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Well, that's the part that gets me too, is because we, you know, actually met him back in mm-hmm. the day. And so for him to go on like that, he's this, you know, he's so thankful and this huge, like Halloween fan and all this. That's definitely not what he acted like when we met him. <laughs> I can tell you, it was the exact opposite of that. And for anybody else that met him around that time, I would say they had similar stories. Like, so I'm not even I, sure if he was drinking around that. I mean, maybe he was, but it wasn't obvious at that point in time, but he was just more or less. I think this was around the time we had John Carpenter on the show. Are we promoting it or something like that? Hmm. And I was like, we would love to get you on for an interview, not knowing <laughs> what I would, yeah. what I would get. <laughs> and then he was like, eh, you know, I don't know. I don't really remember much for the movie. I don't know if I'd be a good interview. Well, it'll be $20 for the audio. Dude, dude, just, yeah. Watch my first interview with him. It's the, it's the most honest real interview you're ever going to see with Tony Moran before he knew he's, you know, cause all his interviews, every time you see him at a convention on a Q and a stage, he didn't have anything to talk about. So he would start telling stories. Fans would tell him he would start. Well, you know, in this, you know how they found the mask, you know, it's like, bro, we've seen the documentaries. We don't need you to retell the stories we've already heard. Tell us what you remember. Okay. You don't remember shit. Okay. Well, you know, next, you know, I mean, it's like you, you perfect example, Will Sandon, ask Will Sandon what he remembers about making Halloween. He doesn't sit up there and go, do you know how they found the mask? You know, he doesn't get up there and go, you know, guess, guess what? You know, the poster, guess what's on, you know, he says, oh, I was a little kid. You know, I remember my parents took me there. I know, you know, he remembers as much as Tony does, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, but now he's embellished this thing and tried to turn it into something he was a bigger part of when dude, he was there one night, one night and Carpenter didn't remember him, has no memory of him and has gone on record saying he doesn't remember him. You know, somebody saying that we did interview Tony Moran. I don't remember that. That wasn't us. No, that was when Jay and them did the Texas convention with him. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think a convention I brought him to, was it Fear Fest? One of those, maybe? I think so, yeah. 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 A couple of Fear Fest shows they did or something like that. Yeah. Um uh, let's let's get back to the to the infamous video. Oh, I had some other there was that thing he kept talking about, a friend of his he had had for sixteen years that became a dick and was probably yeah. a latent a latent homosexual. Like he kept he kept bringing that up. I think he's a latent homosexual. He kept bringing that up like you know, like that's a, a, a negative, like, you know, like he was, he was, he was using it in a derogatory sense, yes. you know? Um, I, I have no idea who he was talking about. I'd be interested to find that guy and hear there's, you know, his, what, what kind of falling out he had with him. <laughs> um, but well, that uh, somebody else that hacked into his, uh, what is a YouTube page or something? Is that what he was saying? Man, there's all these crazy internet sleuths that are trying to get into his personal shit. <laughs> trying to get in the nightmare store. Tony Moran. Um, Steal my shit. Yeah, I like the when the that Michael Strickland guy start starts saying that man, you can collect all this Halloween stuff, but you can't collect Tony fucking Moran as a pal. <laughs> he did say that shit. He did. My favorite I was like, quote, man, though, that's the cringiest thing I've ever heard. Well, you you my probably can. Quote. I mean, he paid him five thousand dollars to do his wedding, so I'm sure. But Andy was be. practically inviting him to move in with him. Right. He was telling right. him, "You need to come down here to San Antonio. We got a big house. We got a dude. Talk to Ken Daniels from Fright Night <laughs> Film Fest. He made the mistake and have Tony Moran move in with him once. Yeah. Did you hear those stories? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He wrecked his car and all kinds of shit. Well, didn't he have to have him uh, removed from his house or what was the deal with that? Something like that. It was something okay. like that. Yeah. I just remember I got a, I, I owe Ken a call. He's been, he's been calling me. <laughs> I just, yeah. I just remembered. Yeah, just, Sorry, I, Ken, I, if you're watching, I'll get to you. I, I promise. A lot, busy. That, a lot of that stuff around that time, uh, 2000, probably 2008, 2009, something like that. No. Yeah. And he, he lived with, for a while i don't know how long it was yeah yeah. he because i think either ken or his wife were in the mortgage business and they offered him a job 
and then he just wasn't working and then he's just drinking and living there. <laughs> and it's like, you know, um, I was sitting there watching that video going, oh man, be careful what you wish for, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. you, you want that ultimate collectible in your house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then the whole thing where he kept going on about, dude, you should have played Jim Morrison. You should have. And I'm like, where are you getting this, dude? (laughs) (laughs) dude, Nothing like Jim Morrison. And then I don't know if you caught this, but at one point, Tony looks deadpan in the camera and he goes, Michael, Michael, I'm bigger than Jim Morrison. He said that. I didn't hear that at all. He said it. He, He goes, Michael, Michael. I'm bigger than Jim Morrison. Yeah. I'm like, wow, this guy's ego is out of fucking control. Dude, Jim Morrison is a legend, an icon. You were on screen for three seconds. Calm the fuck down. Jesus Christ. Did you happen I'm, to catch the, the part two? Because this is my favorite part of the whole hmm. thing. Where, like, <laughs> he starts, he calls somebody a cunt because he does it like 57 times. Yeah. But, or 30. Uh, I no, mean, it was actually, what was it? 30. Yeah, 30. Oh, 30 uh, wait, no. Th- yeah, 26. Sorry. So, yeah. and then that my, my guy goes, he starts screaming, that's our word. Oh, God. Like, like yeah. that, they invented God, that word, word or something. Yeah. I was like, oh. And then he starts telling, the guy starts saying that, I'm, he goes, he goes, Mike, he said, when Tony Moran has problems with a motherfucker, I'm ready to kill. I'm taking notes trying to hurt people. <laughs> and, and Tony, the voice of reasons like Michael, Michael, don't, don't, don't hurt people. Don't hurt people. Like, well, I was like we're, big, we're bigger than that, Michael. We're bigger than that. <laughs> this guy's on there saying he's going to hurt people. I mean, I'm referencing me. Apparently. Uh, yeah. Which, and, and this guy is like Mr. Halloween collector. Apparently he's got this whole store dedicated to Halloween and, I, I don't know exactly what his angle is uh, for doing himself any favors. So, well, I think the podcast itself. I think those guys are starting a, another podcast, right? So the oh, Halloween- those those guys won't be doing anything with him again. <laughs> that's that's the for Halloween sure. Halloween collectors podcast is over with, evidently. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, but they wanted me to come on and you know discuss it and. Uh, they probably would have come on here and talked about it too. I mean, they, 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 they were embarrassed and they were, you know, I know that they were very apologetic about the whole thing. They, you know, they, they were hoping I never saw it, but people started messaging me like when it was up. Cause I don't know if I told you what happened is it had been up about 24 hours and somebody messaged, dude, did you see this shit? Cause I remember you even commented it only had like 300 views. They don't have very many subscribers. And um, uh, so I started watching it and I'm just like, whoa, fuck, you know, and I got probably about an hour and a half into it. And I'm like, I need to take a break. And I went and got some food and I came back and it was gone. Like it had been taken down. So I didn't get to finish it until somebody uh, sent me a link. Um, Actually, it was, I don't think he'd mind me saying Dave McRae said somebody sent him a file of the whole thing and said, Hey, um, he goes, have you seen this? And I said, I told him, yeah, I started watching it. And he goes, well, somebody just sent this to me. I can send it to you if you want to, if you want to finish watching it. And I said, yeah, you know, might as well. And he sent it to me and I said, are you going to do anything? He's like, dude, he goes, this thing's so bad. He goes, I even, I don't even want to touch this. <laughs> he's, like, he's, he's like, I want nothing to do with this. This is like, it goes, this is the worst. This is worse than that last video that came out. I was like, yeah, all right. It's kind, it's kind of a classic though. It's got so many quotable parts to it in an awful way. It's got stuff that we'll use forever. Yeah. yeah it's, no, it's yeah. I mean, I, I need a t-shirt that says I'm peacock and I need, so if anybody <laughs> wants to make me one, I, I need one. <laughs> I'm peacock and yeah. We might work on that. <laughs> yeah, that 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 was my favorite quote from the whole thing. You know, peacock. You know, peacock. You know, peacock. You know, peacock. Um, Tony but, Brand uh, versus Andrew Bernowski. My money's on Andrew. Yeah, I think so. If too. if and if if either one passed out on the other, Andrew, I think <laughs> just him <laughs> collapsing on the other one would would do Tony in. He's a gigantic um, guy too. So. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, no, t- uh, yeah, I, I, my money would definitely be on Bernarski, e- uh, sober or drunk. Um, so at but, this uh, point, though, Sean, is it safe to say? I mean, it's all over with with Tony. There's not going to be a reconciliation tour or anything like that at this point. I don't think. I mean, I just, I, I. Here's the problem. I, I, I don't think, I don't think I could ever believe him. Yeah, I don't think he, I don't think he could be. He's not genuine. Almost everything about the guy is fake. It's, I mean, he puts on this act, and I don't know if he. Th- I I know he thinks he's cool. Like when he's saying the things he's saying or dressing the way he dresses, does whatever you know. I know he thinks he's. People are going. That guy's the shit. You know. That's what in his head. He's just not genuine, and I I could never believe even a sincere apology. I don't think I could ever believe it, you know. Uh, and I don't think he'd ever give one because I'm sure if he sees this, he's like, I'm gonna kill that motherfucker, you know. I mean, yeah, he's I'm, gonna try I'm, to find out who we are, probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who them fucking rednecks? I'll fucking kill them. Us. Okay. <laughs> I mean, but everything everything he's done, he's done to himself, man. Ever, I mean, this whole. This whole show right now is because he went out there and acted like a moron on fucking on the internet. You know, it's like uh, it seems you know, it, that there's still like always people that don't know about this stuff, like people that haven't seen any of the videos or anything. yeah. Well, yeah, it's 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 that, and then there's there are people there is the party crowd type of horror fans that. They're like, fuck yeah, Tony, tell him, you know, like every time he says cunt, they react like that Michael guy. That's our word. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> it gets up, ah! <laughs> run around the room and shit, you know, <laughs> he's in the chat. <laughs> Go you know, I, you know, some of my favorite thing is he, when he, he bad mouths me and he starts talking, he goes, he's a fucking poser. He calls me a poser. Now, I don't know what he means by that. How am I a poser? I, I, I guess if he means if he means I'm a poser that I'm not really a horror fan. I've been really trying hard then. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I've done some hardcore. deep research and dedicated my life to putting on a show, apparently. But he's a fucking poser. You spend a lot of money being a poser too. I am, dude. I'm, dude. This facade is not cheap. <laughs> Come on. There's, a part, right. there's a part of this too, though, that always kind of like you were saying about him kind of being fake. The hypocrisy, though, is what got me of him going on that shit with Daniel Harris and being like, you know, I uh, know I'm I'm a really big fan of Halloween, and this is all a big misunderstanding and. People just had me wrong and, you know, yada, 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 and et cetera, et cetera. And like, I'm really nice guy and all that shit. And then you see like this and you're like, no, no. I mean, some of like he he had the feud with you and still does. But I mean, the James Jude Courtney thing, there's no reason to say that shit. The Tyler Main thing. There's no reason to say that shit. It's him post. Well, it's him peacock. Peacock. I I mean, it is. I I mean, he's trying to look, you know, he, he he's a dude that's irrelevant that hasn't done shit since 1978 and he's trying to stay relevant. And all he can do is bad mouth who the current guy is, you know, um, he'll probably go to his grave, bad mouth in the next 10 guys that play Michael Myers, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's pretty pathetic really. I mean, it really is. I mean, it's, it's all the guy has. I mean, cause if you think about it, <clears throat> a guy like him, three seconds, how many pictures can you have on your table? I mean, half of, you know, a couple of them aren't even of him. A couple of them are photoshopped. They put his face the, on some the fucking, airbrush you know. one in the cornfield. Yeah. Like yeah. Radioactive yeah. pumpkins in the background. Yeah. I, love that. I mean, it's like you get to the point where he's, he's realizing, okay, you know, unless somebody, you know, there's new merchandise or something, I've signed all the shit I can sign. What can I do to keep interest in me? I'll make a spectacle out of myself, you know, you know, I'm going to be the party guy. And that's actually some of those party type horror cons that keep inviting him back. That's what they like about him. He'll stay in the fucking hotel bar to, to let closes drinking with fans. And they all think he's a badass. That's he's, he's built a persona that he feels has worked for him. 
now he's pushed the envelope a little too hard in the bigotry and sort mm -hmm. of hatred kind of direction that isn't so in vogue these days. And now he's feeling a little bit of heat from it. Daniel Harris threw him a life raft or life preserver. She he, tried. And he, and he blew it, man, because he could have turned it around. He could have turned it around and kind of reinvented I mean, himself. He, he had the, he had the, of anybody I can think of, Sean, he <clears throat> had like the golden ticket. He yeah. was in a movie for two, three seconds. He probably could have done that for the rest of his life and mm -hmm. made like a really good living just signing pictures, going to cons and stuff like that. If he had just shut the fuck up and yeah. just been like grateful and just, you know, said thanks to a couple people. But no, so that's his thing. He can't, he can't help himself. He he's constantly doing this to himself, you know, and he needs to point the finger and blame other people. So he needs to blame me. I'm sure. He's going to blame you guys. I'm sure you probably tried to hack into his fucking yeah. iPhone or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever, whatever conspiracy theory, somebody feeds him when he's fucking 10 Jackson Cokes in, uh, or hard seltzers. Drink, hard seltzer, yeah. He doesn't yeah. drink beer anymore. <laughs> it's an odd choice. Because is... yeah. <laughs> you know, real men drink hard seltzer. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a cherry cola flavored. <laughs> like, okay. He was going through the flavors like crazy, though. Uh, yeah. He was. He had the variety pack. Yeah. <laughs> Bartles and James <laughs> variety pack. Well, but, uh, no. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean... When does this shit end? I, I, I you know, hopefully I, soon. I don't, I don't know how many more of those he has in him. I don't know who else would put that up, really. Like, that's another thing, too. It's amazing that got put up to begin with. Like, that they actually, <laughs> well, here's the that. thing those two guys on top did not have control of that channel, it was the drunk guy oh, at the oh. bottom. Yeah. So, they actually spent 36 hours trying to get it taken down. They were actually flagging it. They were they were sending requests into YouTube trying to get it removed because that guy apparently went missing right after that podcast and, and nobody could get a hold of him. So went I've missing. Heard, yeah. He was apparently not able to be contacted after that. So wow. <laughs> what yeah. the hell? God damn. So, uh, wow. So they, they were unable to get in touch with him. And so they did everything they could without having access to the channel to get it removed. And obviously, you know, flagging it for the nudity and everything, probably, yeah. you know, but. Um, I mean, I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to be associated with some. I think I would have logged off, though, that night. I mean. Yeah, you know, it, it's when you're in that position, it's, you know, I can understand how they were kind of a deer in headlights. Like, what the fuck do we do? You know, we were excited to have Tony Moran on our show. Now this is turning into a, you know, embarrassing, but you're trying to kind of save it. But at the yeah. same time, you don't want to interject too much because you don't want to be a part of it. But, uh, you know, then you, then I got to go and then, oh, fuck those pussies. And then, you know, they go down in, in history as a, you know, he didn't even know their names. He kept saying, no, you motherfuckers, no, you, you too much. You're so cool. You do it the fucking top. You're the best. Dude, my favorite is that yeah. that fake laugh that he does. That that fake where you get to so you get to so worked up because everybody's just like you know what I'm saying. He just does the fake laugh. It's because it's it's you know it's like bro, that that's you're not cracking yourself up that much. That's <laughs> that, that 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 your little fake laugh thing is so lame. Stop it. Well, this is too killer. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> That's my That's boy right. Ace. That's I love right. Ace. He's a he's a good dude. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, a <laughs> that was a good one. I like that one. But um, yeah, um, anything else though on the list there that you got? I can't think of anything. I've I think I list. pretty much covered all the. I mean, yeah, like I said, it's the like low the points. Hits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, yeah, that's I, the thing. I, like, we could show the entire two hour thing, which I had it up on Patreon briefly. But like I mean, oh, Jesus you took Christ. it down. It's not even there anymore. Patreon huh. took it down. Yeah. So I'm guessing oh, it was too hardcore for Patreon. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now they, I think one of the guys had actually requested it be a take down, taken down. So 
I don't know. I didn't know well, you could copyright it. I, I can't blame them. I wouldn't want anybody to see it either. Yeah. It's a I bit mean, of a there, to be honest. Since, yeah, since they were embarrassed about it, I mean, I guess I can understand it. But. I think you should probably just take it and crop them out. And, and <laughs> you know. Yeah, at this point, yeah. Yeah, just crop, crop them out, then blur the boobs. Um, uh, I, it's, I, I don't got the, I don't have the time or patience to edit the, every curse word that'd I take, like that'd take a edit. lifetime. I tried to edit some of the cunts out in the video that we did. And I was like, <laughs> God damn boys, this is taking all fucking day. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, um, man, it's always good having you on here. And I know you got a, what you're catching a flight to go to a show or something this weekend coming up or is that the deal? Yeah. I'm going to be at Pensacon in, uh, in, uh, Pensacola, Florida. So I'll be there if Tony wants to come by and beat my ass. Draw that line. Um, that's where you can find me. That's the thing. It's like for what is we're getting close to 20 years. It's like, you know, I, he hasn't shown up to beat me up anywhere. So I don't know. <laughs> I somehow doubt that'll ever happen. Yeah. I don't know. He makes it sound like he's ready to go, bro. I, I think he's Bro. just peacock. Bro. Bro. That's what he's doing. I'm gonna knock that peacock head off your head. <laughs> <laughs> Let's brawl, Sean. Because because we know that brawling solves everything. Yeah, violence is always the answer. Yeah, I mean, because what would happen? Let, let, let's uh, let's say he kicked my ass. Let's okay. Well, then what? Let's just go back to where we were before, talking shit. You know, same old thing. Now. I wouldn't be like cowering in the corner every time I hear his name. You know, but well, um, and and he's so intoxicated anyway. Like I said, you could just easily push him down. If he comes yeah. towards you. Would no. you know? All I'd have to do is you know he'd take a swing at his move once, and he'd probably fall over. Go so. He'd so I have to. Hip. I have to ask so before we get off here, hmm. because we're all into scoops, Sean. That's what we do scoop. here. At Pit. We're into scoops. The truth. Okay, so I'm there, gonna let. Are I'm, there I'm, any I'm gonna give scoop. it to you right now. All Tony right. Moran, dead, age sixty six. I called it. <laughs> no, not that. Not that oh. kind of scoop. Oh, okay. that's a good one though. Okay. But any scoops related to H45 that you can give anything you can talk about. Okay. Whatsoever, I, I, I can confirm. I can hundred percent confirm. Tony <laughs> Moran will not be there. <laughs> <laughs> that's what a guarantee. That yeah. Somebody mentioned to me because you did do a horrors hollowed grounds on trick or treat, the 86 movie. I did. Oh, you did. I know for almost a 100% fact that a company was working on the Blu-ray for that. And it was They're, supposed to have been out last year. Yeah. And they, I was actually contacted to do the Horrors Hollowed Grounds for that. <clears throat> and I said, well, I actually already did it. Um, and I was about to put it on YouTube. Um, and I said, look, you know, my big thing was, especially now, and, you know, there's so many of these fucking people doing filming locations now that, you want to be the first guy to do it. You know, there's, it's very rare. You're the first anymore and nobody had done trick or treat. And I was nervous that some asshole was going to do one. So I told the guy, I just said, look, I ain't sitting on this thing for like a year while waiting for this thing to come out. And they said, yeah, just, you know, go ahead and release it then. So, and I'm glad I did because it's been like a year since they told me that. So I don't know what's going on with it. I have no idea. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I know Felcher was working on it, but he won't tell oh. us anything either. Oh, <laughs> giving up, giving names up and shit. I didn't say his name. He knows he was. There's, there's, there's a I don't video. know nothing about that, Michael Felcher. I didn't say shit. <laughs> no, I mean, Michael Felcher knows he was. He, he knows. He just yeah, won't tell us. Elm I don't even know who you're talking on. about. Nope. I don't even know who that is, Michael Slip, Slippy. Michael. I don't know. Um, Somewhere right now, he's probably like sons of bitches. Right now, yeah, he's, he's probably watching right now, it. actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've um, had a ton of people on here tonight, by the way. Are there? A, yeah, close to 250 at one point in time. That's a that's a lot for us. So oh. we appreciate uh, everybody uh, checking it out and everything. Is there anything else uh, you wanted to promote on here or mention? Um, you know, we're just working on the Halloween convention, you know, lining up guests, um, trying to figure out all the details, trying to come up with the you know, some really cool, I will say this, I, I don't think I get too much trouble for saying this. There are going to be a ton of exclusives at the show, like with big companies. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the works. 
Um, so collectors, Halloween collectors, get ready because we got we, that stuff we started working on a long time ago. Like, because we knew that in order for that stuff to be approved and ready by the show, we'd have to get a jump start on it. So Nathan, Nathan's been working hard on on getting some really cool exclusive done uh, exclusives done with license holders um and uh everybody has been stoked to do it. all the biggest companies have been uh really on board the convention will be at the pasadena convention center it's it's halloween45.com uh is the website it's the same place we've had it since the 25th um except for the model or the model the built the whole building was remodeled um i'm sure i bet that well, the convention the autographs though because you're gonna have a ton of people there five yeah 000, you know bring at least five thousand dollars i would say yeah that would get you in yeah. the door the 5k yeah. get you in the door yeah. um but uh no i you know that's the thing is a lot of you know as you guys know a lot of these people at the show if you're a halloween collector you've probably met them you know it, you're going to be looking for like the rare first timers or, or people that just don't do them. Um, you know, we're going to have a lot of those. So if you're only going for those people, it probably wouldn't be that expensive, but if you're trying to get everybody's autograph, that's going to be at the show. Yeah. You better get a loan. Is that, that you you're know, probably going to do the tours and stuff, right? Like you turn the yeah. locations and all yeah. that too. The Friday on the 29th Friday before the show, uh, that'll be the tours. And we're also looking into doing another event with Tom Atkins at the Halloween three bar. Um, that, that was a huge success, like sold out super fast. And the funny thing is he was like, not into the idea at all. <laughs> he was kind of like, Oh Jesus, you know, especially after a long weekend, he had so much fun. I mean, he talks about it. Like that was such a blast. I'm so glad you talked me into doing that. We doing that again. I'm like, let's do it. You know? So um, we're looking into doing something like that. I want to add a new element to it, though. I'm try to to add something else, make it special. Um, I have Somebody's some ideas. Requesting some peacock merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> to oh yeah, something um, out with that. Thank you, Hulk. Yeah, yeah, peacock, and I'm. I'm that's, <laughs> that's probably I'm never gonna. That one's gonna stay with me. <laughs> Let me see Clark over there peacocking. Peacock. I love it. I think that's a good one. I think that was that's one of the only like interesting things that came out of his mouth was uh, the whole peacocking thing. He, that, he gave us a lot of a lot of new quotes, new material. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I have a fancy Nancy shirt. Yeah. yeah. Oh, can you hold on just one second? I know we're sure. close to wrapping yeah. this up, but give me just sure. a second. No problem. But uh he's gonna bring out a live peacock. <laughs> <laughs> He did. He's literally peacocking. <clears throat> yeah, Scott is right. Everyone loves Tom Atkins. Right, Uncle Bill? That's right. We do have Scream Factory Year 6 coming up on Sunday with Pop from Pop's Movie Dungeon. And everybody that's watching right now, check that out on the Dead Pit YouTube page. 10, I think it's 10 o'clock on Sunday night. And everybody, it's a good opportunity to tell everybody to thumbs up the video. If you like this sort of thing, we do these streams and videos quite a bit. Uncle Bill's been doing them for about the past two or three days in a row. Jesus. Yeah. I'm about wore out about it now. You but I love, I love to have any kind of guest or anything on, but damn, doing the regular streams. Well, you, got a, you got on there with Dana briefly last night, but not. I did. Yeah. Uh, just to do like the, the comfort horror thing. Yeah, but previous to that, we did a really good one with the packaging. Sorry. I really just had to pee. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. Anyway, um, you know what I was just thinking about though? I was, what would Tony do, or even Fancy Nancy, if somebody mm. printed out like screen grabs from the from the thing and brought them to a show to get signed? <laughs> That'd be so killer. I mean. Somebody will probably say, could you that. sign this to Joe? He's peacocking. <laughs> now that you've said well, that's that, a new I eight eight about guarantee ten. somebody will do that. Tony yeah. can put it on his table. New eight by 10. But man, it's always good having you on here and maybe we can get yeah. you back sometime. I know there's been a lot of comments and everything in the chat. Uh, Where is the chat? 
I got to see some of these comments. Well, it's Where's on that at? it's on YouTube. Uh, oh, okay. The YouTube. Page. There's a, can, there's been a ton. Yeah, you can't keep up. With I can't them, hardly keep up with them. But I yeah, I mean, go maybe on there and start answering them when the or, convention season on. slows down a little bit. Oh yeah, I see. It. Shit. Oh yeah. Yeah. Get go you back and get you on to answer some questions or something. But yeah, there's a ton of them on there right now. But <laughs> but I'm seeing the Tony can always sell those clown motel photos. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, have him quote <laughs> that's a cunt. tony moran wine coolers <laughs> hang on i can play that's that a one. cunt that's it that's that's what that's a, that's a cunt right there that's a that's a that's a cunt right there you, 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 you know what a cunt is right he's a cunt, <laughs> that's a he's cunt. A cunt. <laughs> oh my god i was reading some of the, these there's some great ones on here yeah. Would Tony be allowed in the door as an attendee? No. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, he could buy a ticket, I guess. I mean, he could, but I, you know, I would definitely just have him tossed, you know, because I mean, I don't need him there screwing shit up. Like he would just be there to start shit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, somebody said poop break, but no, it was just, a, I said the pee. That's a, that would be a quick one. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. But, yeah, uh, no, Tony Moran in the parking lot at age 45. That'd be funny. Yeah, he could like <laughs> Jeep Cherokee the back of it and have autographs. <laughs> and... <laughs> Jeep Cherokee. <laughs> I can tell yeah, I got you a deal over here, $20. <laughs> it'd, like, it'd be like the, the dude you see out in front of the concert selling the bootleg shirts. H45 yeah. shirt right here with Tony Moran's face on it. There Come get go. it. Five bucks. We're, gi we're giving him ideas. Oh God! You know, right now he's sitting there going, "Babe, babe, that's a pretty good idea." Yeah. <laughs> really we can good. do that. Hey, you, I fucking love you. I, lo I love. You. We can get do over that. here. Look at that ass. Yeah, Look yeah. at that ass. Then he gets distracted and forgets he's on a podcast. <laughs> he's <just sitting> <laughs> mumbling. He's in love. He's in yeah, love. I, I, I will, I'm happy for he's found love. I hap I happy. I'm she's happy a, that he has found love. She's a lucky and, woman. Um, Yep, yep. I mean, so how does that work? Can he marry himself? If sure. Well, if somebody would pay him five thousand dollars, he would totally do it. Yeah, he should. Ha he should pay that Michael guy five G's to to marry them. You know, I bet you he would be stoked to do so. Uh, <laughs> April. No. He'd be like, can you believe I'm fucking marrying Tony fucking Moran? Am I nuts? Am I crazy? Yeah. yeah. You can have all the merchandise you want, but you're going to have Yeah, Tony well, then Moran. I heard like a week later, he went on, like started a fire sale on, 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 uh, on Facebook. He was like blowing out his whole store. So I don't know what's going on with that, but. Oh, Jesus. I, I seemed like he suddenly went, came into some financial trouble. Out of out of nowhere, don't know what what that's all about, but okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not in. I'm what not in contact thing? with you, the dude. You may not. Well, go ahead. Sorry. No, it's, I'm not in. I mean, the guy. I had no issues with the dude, and then he just jumped on the Tony Moran train and went for a ride. You know, so. Oh, you're you know. you're good friends with Tommy Lee Wallace. Have you heard anything about that? Evidently, a company in the UK is doing a Fright Not Two um, Blu-ray. Or a 4K or something like that. Do you know? If I, I haven't talked to him about it. No. Okay. No. I mean, I, I, I think he mentioned something to me about like there was some talk about it, but I haven't heard any details. So that'd be good. That finally get out there. That'd be cool. Yeah, I think um, they're scanning it from a 35 millimeter print though, so it's not going to be perfect, but it'll be better than what we've got, I guess. I should hit him up and ask him. I'd do a horse hog grounds for that, you know, if they wanted one on their, you know. <clears throat> yeah, that so movie's got a quite a big fan base now. It seems like. Yeah, it's it's, it's definitely. It's funny. He's got a reputation of having his films kind of come back around and have another yeah. life. <laughs> I mean, it's the, my all time favorite Amityville film is Part Two. You know, which he wrote. You know, mm -hmm. the Possession. Yeah. He he was good with those sequels. Except yep. for vampires. We won't get into that one. Lost Muertos. <laughs> Lost Muertos. Yeah. yeah, that's John Bon Jovi. 
<laughs> that's one of the films better than probably for a show like films that time forgotten that's definitely one of them but i mean there's a reason <laughs> yeah yeah no you know what i watched it it's not good but i've definitely seen worse that's for sure well they made I mean, uh, a sequel to bats bats to human harvest do you remember that one uncle bill we reviewed oh that yeah we had day. to review that because they sent it to us <laughs> creep show three. Oh god, oh, god. Almighty. yeah i'll never understand that one and what was that one hellraiser not oh, judgment the what was it revelation revelation Re yeah is that it revelate yeah it's the guy the the pinhead that looked totally shocked every time he was on camera <laughs> 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 I'll tear your soul apart. <laughs> oh, Surprised, Penny. Dude, uh, we appreciate you coming on here, though. It's always got good. Worry there, on. Uncle Bill. What's happening? Oh shit! Uh, that tin can internet. Here there, oh, there we go. go. There you <laughs> that's I was, that's what Tony Moran sees normally. <laughs> that's how <he> likes it. <laughs> it's yeah. Tony Moran vision. Yeah. At this point, I could probably walk right past him. He wouldn't even recognize me. I don't know. <clears throat> but so he'd see me peacocking out of the corner of his eye. Me peacocking. You cut it. I'm Sean Clark. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. Did you hear me by me? You know, that's funny. There's a lot of people say, and I, know, I feel super, like, arrogant saying it. But, it, you know, it's a lot of people say it to me that, like, he's he seems like he's really more pissed off that I've become more popular than him or better known than him. I hate to say famous. I don't want to say that, but I've become more known for him uh, than him for the film that he was in, you know, like more Halloween fans know who I am than he, than who he is. And it bothers him. Like, you know what I mean? That I've made a career out of something that he had this little bit in and, it, and, you know, I get it, you know, there's whatever, but it's just like, bro, you know, you do do your thing. I'll do my thing. You know I mean? <laughs> well, I mean, he's his own worst enemy yeah. for sure. He's, he's yeah. off in Mars somewhere. I think at this point, he's just operating on a different wavelength. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can understand that if there's something that you're, you were one of the people in, you know, the movie. And then you see a guy like me, who's basically built a career on, the back of the film you were in and you know, he's trying so hard to stay relevant and I keep doing new things, you know, and, and keeping myself going without having to put on, you know, without peacocking. Um, I mean, I guess I, the, you can see where the jealousy, yeah, you got that right. <laughs> yeah. You probably good. remember that famous picture, him in yeah. the parking lot. That's going to be him at age 45. Sitting there like this, <laughs> reading yep. a book. Oh, well, yeah. Anyway. I mean, it's it's always good getting you on here, and uh, you know, safe travels and everything. And hopefully, we'll uh, have you back on here before too long. Yeah, man. Yeah, I hope I helped clear the air of any misconceptions. If in, in case Tony misspoke by any chance. Something you, tells me we probably this is not the last time we'll hear, hear from Tony. I, I just know, get that if, feeling. What if Tony got it all right? Maybe he maybe <laughs> everything he said was right. Yeah. Maybe yeah. John Carpenter superimposed that face on the pumpkin. All that stuff. Mm -hmm. All that stuff that we haven't seen or confirmed. Right. He's and I remember how I love he's like he goes, he's John Carpenter. He's a, he's a motherfucker. He's a motherfucker. He just starts going, yeah. The genius. He couldn't remember who I was, but he's a fucking motherfucker. He's a great guy. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, I love that guy. Yeah. John. All right. Well, all right. Anyway. But uh, you have a good night, man. We appreciate it. And we will catch all you guys next time. Deadpit.com. Give us a thumbs up. Off you butts. Like subscribe and if you subscribe here's something else you can do once you subscribe you can click the bell notification right and it'll notify you anytime that dead pit puts up new shit or don't i really don't give a if you do i don't. want you to i want you to <laughs> let's, let's keep our community growing here on I, I don't i don't like it i don't want you to do nothing
That's a neat thing to do right pal. No, don't you yeah. dare do it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And <laughs> click that bell. Hey everyone, it's Oak Early Jaws. We got some great shirts for you. We got Faces of Death Part 2. We got creepy stories to tell in Kentucky. The Colonel would approve. We also got DeadPit.com. We got DeadPit Radio with the little fucking DeadPit dude on there. We got It Never Ends, a Halloween spoof parody of the new movie. We got It at Night. We got the Rad Pack, Uncle Rad himself. It just gets better and better. So go on and get you some shirts over at Team Public. It just gets better and better, boss. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on in addition to the midweek shows and fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears started only one dollar.